Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that's intent on making bearing chest hair socially acceptable once again. My name is Cody. Say, kids, do you like going on uh, expeditions to tropical paradises and shooting animals? With a camera? Well, now we're going to take a look at a game that simulates just that. Costa Rica from Mayfair Games. In Costa Rica, from Mayfair Games, up to five players, two to five players, are going to join expeditions to go photographing some various wild animals. Kooky birds, wild cats, and all sorts of other fun creatures. The game board of Costa Rica is actually uh, made up of a bunch of hexes that form a giant hex. Uh, five hexes on each side, you're going to have six kind of points there of entry. And each of these various uh, tiles, hex tiles, are going to represent different terrain. You've got mountains, you've got jungles, you've got swamps. And then at the six points, you're going to place very, you're going to place the expeditions, which are made up of your meeples. Now, each player has six meeples, so you have one uh, meeple in each of the expeditions. Now, what you can do on your turn is flip over the first hex of your entry point. It's going to reveal an animal. Odds are it's just going to be one animal. It's possible it could be two, depending on what the terrain type is. Uh, but you're going to find that animal. And then you've got to decide, do I want to keep this animal for scoring later, or do I want to press my luck and go on? Now, here's the thing. If you decide to go on, that's not it. Then everybody around the table gets to decide if they're going to pass or if they want to take it. Then you can flip over another one, and you can make that decision again. Do I want to take these two? Uh, you know, to score later, or do I want to keep going? And everybody else, they've got to pass. Then you can keep going. Now, as soon as you or somebody else decides they want to take all the tiles that have been revealed, the turn is over. Whoever takes all the revealed hexes has to remove their meeple from the expedition, and then it is the next player's turn. Now, as you are revealing these hexes, you're finding more and more animals. And you want to find kind of sets. You want to collect sets of animals. Uh, the more of a specific animal you have, then you get more and more points. Now, here's the problem. There are also the uh, mosquitoes out there. And if you reveal one mosquito, well, that's not such a big problem. <clears throat> but if you reveal two mosquitoes, then all the hexes disappear and your turn is over and you get nothing. Now, since the expeditions actually advance into the now emptied uh, areas, the, the, the tiles there, they have more options to explore next time. So another player can go off of a, a previous expedition that has kind of penetrated into the play area, or you can go and start from one of the other outside play areas and start moving in. Pretty soon, you're going to have, from a lot of different sides, this giant hex being kind of eroded. Now you're going to keep following these steps, going around and around, pressing your luck, trying to get more and more of these animals, hoping somebody else doesn't steal uh, the animals from you, and hoping you don't run into those two mosquitoes, and all at the same time collecting more and more uh, of the animals that you want that you think will uh, score you victory. The game end is triggered when there are no more tiles on the board, or when there are no more meeples on the board. You then proceed to scoring. Now, you've got, you each have a little kind of play array in your color. On one side, it says kind of the probability of finding danger or finding double animals and certain uh, terrain types. But it also has, on the other side, kind of scoring. It says how many of a specific kind of animal uh, gets you a certain score. So you look at that play array to determine how many animal sets you have, what they score at, and then whoever has the highest score wins Costa Rica. So Costa Rica is a game that, uh, you know, I saw it, I thought, oh, okay, this, this could be interesting. It's a push-your-luck game, and, you know, I like push-your-luck games. They're not my favorite, but I think they're kind of fun sometimes. Uh, so, you know, I, I brought it out, I set it up, of course, got all the tiles out, and there's that old joke, what are we playing, Settlers of Catan? And then somebody else comes in from the bathroom who wasn't there for the original joke, oh, what is this, Settlers of Catan? Yeah, okay, we get it. It's not Settlers of Catan. It's got hexes. Just shut up. So anyway, we go ahead, you know, we, we start playing it, and... Really quickly, people pick this up. This is this is a really intuitive game. You know, you read through the rules, you get the basic gist of it, and then people get it. It's it's really easy to learn. I like games that are easy to learn. Easy to learn and easy to teach, and this is it. <clears throat> this game, my initial thought was, well, this is kind of more of a kid's game. It's more of a younger uh, a younger person's game. And I suppose it kind of is, except this game is super, super, super mean. It's mean because you know these people are pushing their luck and they're the ones taking the risks and yet you are, ah, I'm going to take all those from you. And you can just totally cut the legs out of somebody if they're trying to, to, to get to a certain number. 
and just take it, still the momentum, the turn's over. And that's a mean thing to do, and it's really funny. And then also, too, you can kind of maneuver your expedition around other expeditions and cut them off. So if you've lost a meeple from a different expedition, you can essentially cut off that expedition so that you're not going to, you know, it doesn't hurt you at all, but you can really screw over other players. And, again, that's me, and it's really funny. Um, I, to, to me, honestly, that meanness factor, if that's what I can call it, makes Costa Rica a winner. I really enjoyed Costa Rica a lot more than I thought I would. I was pleasantly surprised with this game. It, it, it's just, uh, you know, it's a short game. It's like a half an hour, and it goes fast. I mean, everybody knows what they're doing, and so it just boom, boom, boom. And it's a fun game. It's it's a mean game, and I really, really enjoyed it. So the recommendation from the Discriminating Gamer for Costa Rica is buy it. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer, and i got to tell you, I really like Costa Rica, but what I'd like even more, Costa Rica Suave. Please somebody help me on my feet again, and I don't know where I'm going, and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. The swine.